So we want to talk a little bit about the participation in the outcome tracking system. So just like in the old system, the Employment First Outcome Tracking System, providers of employment services are required per rule 5123-2205 once a year to enter information regarding the services that they provide. So rule says providers of employment services shall collect and submit to the department individual specific data regarding employment services and employment outcomes, including but not limited to type of services provided, how individuals obtained employment, hours worked, wages earned, and occupations. The data shall be submitted through a web-based data collection system developed and maintained by the department. So when the Employment First initiative came about in March 2012, a task force and advisory committee were created, and the task force said we need to have some way in order to track those goals and therefore we need to have a web-based data collection system. And that's how the Employment First Outcome Tracking System was born. So now that we've rewritten it, the Outcome Tracking System is taking the EFOTS's place and you are still required to enter information into the system if you are providing those employment services. So we have added a couple of other questions that aren't relevant to employment services. So let's, let's talk about those questions and which ones are required per rule. If you remember, questions one through four are required per rule 5123-2205 for providers providing employment services. So again, if you're providing vocab, group employment supports, individual employment supports, any of those eight career planning services, or if you are providing services to somebody um, in competitive employment, you are required to answer questions one through four. And if you remember those questions, they are, is the individual in a competitive job? Are you supporting this individual in a group integrated job? Is the individual in facility-based work? And is the individual in self-employment? So those are the four questions that are required if you are providing employment services. Questions number five and six are not currently required per rule. So these are the, are you providing the individual facility-based non-work services? And are you providing the individual community-based non-work services? So again, these aren't currently in rule, and we are asking that you add that information in. We are going to be adding this to rule with an expected date of October 2020. So we are asking that you go ahead and enter that information now so that we can get a good baseline this fall. And we will be reporting all of this data, whether it's required or not, across the field. It's really just important, again, to get that overall bigger picture of what's happening for individuals and how they're spending their days. So if we know all of these questions, then we're going to be able to really capture what we need to do in order to meet that 50% by 2024 and allows us to really understand how people are spending their days and what we need to do with policies and procedures across Ohio. So the Office of System Support and Standards is the regulatory agency within DODD. And I have spoke with OSAS regarding the citations that are given for entering information within the outcome tracking system. So all citations have been postponed until July 1st, 2020. And what is going to happen after this July 1st, 2020 is once you enter the information in for each reporting period, once it closes after March 31st, I'm going to clean the data and I'm going to analyze it and I'm going to give a report to OSAS to let them know which providers were non compliant for questions one through four. And then they will determine whether or not they will give citations or not. This list of non compliant providers will be in a report form and it will also live on our external data website that we'll talk about here in a little bit. So it's really important that you enter the data each reporting period. So now we're going to talk a little bit about reports. So within the system, once it's live, county boards will have a performance report. 
This will be the only report that will be available during the reporting period. And this report allows the county board to monitor the progress of the providers. So you'll be able to see the percentage of each provider, how many questionnaires they have completed. It will allow you to contact different providers to ask if they need any assistance during the reporting period if their percentages are low, or you can praise those providers that have done a lot of hard work and gotten their questionnaires completed. Again, this performance report is only available to county boards during the reporting period. Once the reporting period ends, data will be available for all users. So it doesn't matter if you're an ICF, a provider, or a county board, you will have access to data within the outcome tracking system, which is really nice. You won't have to use the data warehouse if you don't want to, or if you're a county board and you want to use data warehouse, that will be available as well, but the data will live within OTS as, as well. Data will also be hosted on our external data page, which we will be making available to the public, and we'll talk a little bit about that here in a few minutes. I kind of want to talk a little bit about services and supports reports, and this is only in regards to county boards. So county boards will have access to services and support reports within the data warehouse. I just wanted to let everybody know, since we've talked a lot about the services and supports being updated in CRM, there is a new service matrix that is live and all of the reports have been updated within data warehouse. And this just allows you to get counts for employment and day services within your counties. So there is going to be a service matrix uploaded within my learning. So if you are curious on that service matrix and how I do data on a monthly basis to show you percentages of integrated employment and facility-based work and uh, adult day services, the maps that I create with the percentages, this is how I get my numbers. So you'll be able to see the hierarchy and non-hierarchy service matrix. If you have any questions at all, please contact me and we can definitely go through it. We won't go through all of that today, but I just wanted everybody to be aware that the service matrix has been updated and reports within Data Warehouse have been updated and are now available for you to use. So now let's talk about that external data page that I have um, referenced a couple of times now. All the data within Outcome Tracking System will be available after the reporting period ends, and it will be available to the public. Only the aggregated data will be available. Individual specific information, protected health information will not. So if you get onto this external data page, you'll be able to compare variables regionally, by county, by the type of job, wages, hours, all of that. So all those big questions that we want answered, how many people are in an individual competitive job, how many people are in a group integrated job, how many people are in a facility-based job, all of those variables will be available within this external data page. doesn't matter if you're family, individual, county board, or a provider you will be able to see all this data within this external data page. Also within this external data page, we will house the list of non-compliant providers for those questions one through four. So we wanna make sure that we are very transparent with our data and that everybody has access to the data. We're pretty excited about all the data that's going to be available within OTS. I also want to talk about some of the other reports that will be available within OTS. OTS will allow us to really determine after that reporting period different things that will not only help you county boards locally or providers locally, but you'll be able to see all the data within OTS that you answered within those six main questions and sub-questions. So, Again, just like the data page, the external data page, you're going to be able to see these variables, but you can drill down to that individual level if you would like. 
So you're going to be able to see the number of people in each category. You're going to be able to see how many individuals have multiple jobs and the percentages of each. You're going to be able to see how people are paid and how many hours they have, how individuals are receiving or are eligible for fringe benefits and what fringe benefits there are. You're going to be able to see those top occupations and you're gonna see where people are on that place on the path community employment. And again, these reports will be available for county boards, providers, and ICF users. Some tips when using the outcome tracking system, you are going to want to use Google Chrome. It works best in Google Chrome. Unfortunately, Microsoft is no longer supporting their Internet Explorer browser, and our system does not work correctly on Internet Explorer. So you will want to make sure that you use Google Chrome because it is the best for our system. You can also use Firefox, but I recommend that you use Google Chrome. Some resources. We're going to have a, a user guide with some screencast available for you so that you are able to see and reference each section for the, the system. So if you get stuck or you have a need for clarification for one thing or another, you are able to use those user guides and screencasts. They'll be uploaded on My Learning along with the Employment First website. We'll also have the outcome tracking system messages. So if there are things that are going down for maintenance or if we want to uh, remind you to complete the questionnaires by a certain time, we'll have the ability to send you those messages. We have a chat form on my learning. So after reviewing this webinar or looking at the user guides and you have further questions, feel free to use that chat form for any of those questions. We're going to have a live chat in October. So when the reporting period opens, if you are getting into the system and you need clarification or if you want some further guidance on anything within the system, I highly recommend that you join us for that live chat. You have this recorded webinar, so you, if you want to go through a certain section again, you are more than welcome to do that. And then again, we have our Employment First website and our Employment First mailbox that are available to you if you have any questions. And again, I want to make sure that you are utilizing your CLEs or your Community Life Engagement Project Managers. They are great on multiple things. So if you have any questions at all, they are more than welcome to assist you. Or you can contact me as well. And if you look at the PowerPoint, you will be able to see our phone numbers and email addresses. Thank you very much for watching this webinar. We are here to help. We are really excited about this new outcome tracking system. We do feel that we built the system in order to do those requirements that the work group wanted, where it's easy to get in, easy to get access data, and it's getting what we need. So um, thank you very much, and we're very excited. And again, reach out to us if you have any questions.